Welcome! I'm Michael from OPEP. We're in my studio here, uh, Junk Mill Studios, uh, which is where I did uh, the writing for uh, the songs on, uh, say, Watershed, the last record, and also the new one, Heritage. I uh, wrote all the songs here and recorded all the demos here. Um, basically what we're doing is a little film uh, as everybody else is doing when they're recording because everybody needs information all the time available 24-7 because that's how people work these days. Uh, as you know I'm talking English and uh, as the film kind of we, we're gonna go into the studio and you're gonna see the band in its natural habitat and we're not gonna talk English because we don't really talk English amongst each other because we're Swedish. Why I'm doing it now is because I know I'm being filmed and I kind of realized I sound awkward when I'm talking uh, in my native tongue when I know that I'm being filmed pretty much like a bad actor, like uh, Keanu Reeves in Dracula uh, or something like that, sorry. Basically everything was recorded onto this computer, uh, the, the demos and we're going to use those demos as a template for the actual recording of the album. We're just going to um, exchange everything, all the synthetic sounds that, say for instance, I recorded on uh, on the keyboard, like the Mellotron plugins and stuff like that, are going to be replaced with a real Mellotron, a real Fender Rhodes, a real Hammond organ and so forth, you know. And obviously real drums because I'm using a, like a plug-in drum thing um, to to get drums on the demo. So um, yeah, you're gonna see all that later. Um, but basically, yeah, this is it. You know, it doesn't take so much. You know, it's you know the the good thing for me is that I'm a musical genius, so uh, I can just basically come up with with a masterpiece on a on a um, clapping my hands. You know. There you go. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sitting here with a guitar as well, you know, not playing it as you as you realized, and it's not really necessary for the shot, but it kind of kind of looks good. Kind of looks a bit like Brian Adams hanging around, you know. It's a nice guitar. For the coming 21 days, we're gonna record this album Heritage in a studio called Atlantis Studio which uh, was used to be called Metronome Studios and lots of famous, uh, in particular Swedish artists recorded there like ABBA did all their records up until they opened their own studio so some of the classic ABBA songs have been recorded there and uh, shitloads of Swedish artists and um, even Lenny Kravitz has been there, I heard. Um, but it's a nice studio and we're going to be uh, working with the engineer called Janne Hansson who's been he's the owner of the studio and has been working there for since the early 70s basically and gonna meet him very nice old gentleman um, and obviously all the other guys uh, Martin Mendes our bass player Per Viberg our keyboard player notice I'm saying their names in like an English accent now because it sounds cool um, Frederick Ackerson on the lead guitar and obviously Martin Axenrod on the drums and percussion on this album and myself Michael Ackerfeld Ackerfelder This is basically how interesting music looks on a computer when it's been recorded we got um, drums, bass, guitar, keyboards and vocals this particular track is a song that I'm writing together with Frederick. Uh, it doesn't have a name right now, it's just called Frederick. Which might be the actual title because it's a fucking cool, cool title. Is it interesting? Well, when I hit this button here on the computer, that's my finger, boom! Song's gonna start. Lush. Uh, 
and uh, yeah, it doesn't really take much. Just some uh, like a mixing. <laughs> this is my mixing thing. It's all you need basically. It's a volume basically. Some shit lyrics. Tune machine. Started singing. Famous telephone effect on the voice there. The logo for the studio. Lately I've been, uh, or we collectively as a band, been uh, thinking about our musical future in many ways. And uh, I know that we're considered a metal band and in many ways I still think we are a metal band, but it depends on what you mean by metal. Um, I love metal as a start, form of music. It, it's what uh, sparked my interest in music. It, it was what made me. It, it, it's what made me want to pick up the guitar and play, play myself, be in a band and all that stuff. But you know, I've been in a band for 20 years now, and um, I was writing songs uh, for what's going to be the 10th album, what's going to be Heritage in the, so to speak, classic or standard or whatever you want to use, or whatever word you want to use, way that, in, in the traditional Opeth style, whatever that, whatever that is, but it was uh, metal songs and um, I listened to it and I just didn't feel it in my heart that this is what I want to do. Uh, when I heard first time demos, it was uh, Mike's place, he had a party that day, so we to the listen. Uh, we were pretty much drunk at the time. And um, I just, from nowhere, I say to him, like, if that's gonna be the next open album, I would be disappointed. I just didn't feel it in my heart. So I just basically, there was like two 10 minute song. I just marked all of them up, hit delete and then I saved it and they're gone forever and it was a relief and then I kind of started over and uh, the songs came out the way they did you know because that's the type of music that I like now and that's always been the case for Opeth I've always been writing music that I like and whenever I'm in doubt of our musical future or what people are gonna think I'm just like fuck that man you know, just do what you like because it kind of worked for 20 years. I always wrote songs and music that I, I personally want to listen to and this is no exception to that rule. There is a different direction on this record, which in, when I heard about the direction I was a bit like, oh, are we really going to do this? But then when I heard the songs back at Mike's house, I was there doing some guitar solos. I really liked what he had come up with. We needed to to do something different, um, play something different, and explore the all the kinds of music that we want to play and that we listen to. I'm not really worried, you know. I fucking love the songs, and I hope you're gonna like them too. You know, even though it's, I guess, a little bit different from what you've. Uh, Heard from from Opeth, but yeah, I hope you're gonna like it. You know, it's uh, we're gonna record twelve songs, I think, or twelve or thirteen songs, and I wrote all of them pretty much on my own, apart from one song that I wrote together with with Frederick. But we're all gonna come together as a band, and it's the same as always. You know, I've basically always been writing all the songs, and have all the other guys come in and just make the songs their song as well. You know, translate their own feelings into to this song and into the playing of this of particular song, you know. Um, yes, yeah, so we're gonna do it a bit more old-fashioned, you know. We're gonna use uh, a Pro Tools rig and record everything on because it's simply so much easier, you know. We're recorded on on uh, two-inch tapes like these, you know. They weigh a ton, you know, and you can fit 16 minutes of music onto one of these. And ha having long songs like us, like in the past, we had like songs of 10, 12, 30 minutes long, and 
then you're wasting like five minutes on each tape and they cost cost a lot of money actually and it's just big hassle to record not sure if they sound better um, so we're recording onto a Pro Tools rig because it's well, it's, it's superior to me it's just easier but we're doing it in, in an old traditional way we're not gonna do too much editing the idea is to record as much as possible live at least the drums and bass and see see how that goes and just uh, use an old real sound for the instruments you know I'm really tired of that whole metal productions where the drums don't really sound like drums anymore you know and we've been kind of caught caught up in that little thing ourselves you know we we trying to make the drums sound like a drum machine basically which is fucked up uh so uh what what we're gonna do with this album is make everything sound earthy and real and make the instruments sound like instrument sounds, you know. Like musicians, actual people playing them as opposed to a computer playing it, you know. We're just recording onto a computer and that's it. Uh and also the guitar sounds I think you're gonna notice it's a bit different than what we've uh uh, what we've had in the past and that's basically we're just going to cut a lot of distortion and uh, what that's going to mean to myself and Frederick as guitar players is that we're going to have to struggle more and we have to play better in order to make it sound good and uh, that was one of the first uh, ideas I had about this album about heritage was that we're going to suffer playing these songs you know we're going to we're going to have to leave a, a bit of our own personality into these songs and if we don't feel good, we're not really going to play good. You know, you have to, I don't know, project your 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 feelings and emotions for real onto the music. You know, when you're in a a metal band, so to speak, and you're 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 uh, you got like shitloads of distortion and mesa boogie, a rectifier, triple rectifier, whatever they're called, and you got a active EMGs and all that stuff. You know, you can basically feel like shit, and it's still going to sound all right. You know, but. Uh, I want it to be more emotional this time around, so it's going to be really interesting to see what it sounds like. And it's the same for everyone, you know. Um, we'll, we'll see how how it goes. But it, um, I think for, for some reason I think we're going to come together as a band more than we have ever had before, uh, because everybody is going to have to really, really focus on everything. I'm going to try and be some type of producer for this album and kind of over oversee everything um, and then we're gonna go to uh, to to England to Stephen Wilson's studio or wherever he's, he's gonna be he wanna be and just uh, let him look into doing a mix for this album and I'm gonna be there with him probably gonna film him as well even though he's an ugly cunt um, so yeah you're gonna see uh, see the whole process of making a record or at least how we make records, you know. Maybe it's a bit different than how you make your records. Um, so, well, today is the 31st of January and it's the first day of our recording of the 10th Opeth album, Heritage. I hope you're going to enjoy it. Thank you. It's my car. It's a Volvo. Golly, it's a Volvo in Sweden. That's a twat right there. Hello? <laughs> We're at the studio. On our way to the studio. Come and flick on. Here comes the airplane. Maybe it's gonna crash somewhere. Sure, second. What then, Napraten? That means uh, driving car according to speed limits. Safe driving, both hands on the wheel. One hand, clockan two. Other hand, clockan three. One of the hands two o'clock. The other hand ten o'clock. <laughs> so this is the secret passage. You don't have both hands on the wheel, no. See? Sorry. Heavy traffic. Like in New York. <laughs> like New York. Get some real pants you wore. Old slab. Slab. Slag. 
Vad heter floden här under? Va? Kvai. Kvai. Floden. <laughs> Bron över floden Kvai. Viking Street. Då är vi framme. Studion ligger där framme. Träramen. Träram. Zoomar ut. Här sitter Janne. Surfar porr. Precis. Ja, här är gamla... Gam, gamla, gamla grejer. Jag såg gamla foton här från och den här banden stod har alltid stått där verkar det som. Vilken då? Den gamla banden, ja. Ja, fast det, i och för sig det var en Alpex band där förut. Okej, okay. då har den alltså all, inte alltid stått. Inte alltid. Men länge. Väldigt länge. Jag tror du för fan vill se där? Snabba på. Då ser jag om att, att jag sätter det på själv. Ja. Så ska det vara. Hur känns det Axelrot? Ja. Jävligt bra. Hör du fattas någonting på den här hängpukan? Vad ska jag göra? Det så det ska vara. Inga symboler heller. Det gör de med munnen. Ja, det lägger jag efteråt. Då. Med munnen? Ja, När du spelar? Men det är lite delay och sånt va? Men det är så Ja, står det här. Drar, drar, i, ka drar i kablarna. Ja. Förstår jag inte. Drar i snablarna. Tåten. Sandra, vad ska du göra här? Ska jag futta lite? Ja. ja. Se till att inte få med några du dubbelhakor på mig. Ska se smal och snygg ut ska jag göra. Ett gammalt... Är det en nivbord? Är det bra grejer? Ja, det är det faktiskt. Och sen dator. Sign of the times. Här har vi lite gamla grejer. Jag hoppas vi ska kunna använda det här snart. De här gamla bandekorna. Och men särskilt den här gitarren där saknas en sträng. Den har vi tänkt använda mycket. His performance, uh, he delivered every time uh, during rehearsals, live performance, uh, studio is, is almost up, out of this world. And, and 
singing as well. I came up with this song, Lines in My Hand, which was the first one. And uh, it's a bit of an oddball song. But it's quite, uh, again, it's quite fun. It's uh, very intense in some way, like the ending part of that song is very intense, I think, and featuring the best drumming ever in, in Opeth, I think. You know, Axe is just, I mean, going crazy. <laughs> Plain and simple. Ja, gitarr på den faktiskt. Ja, men det låter bra va? Väldigt Var du nöjd? Ja, det är nöjd. Hur nöjd är du ungefär? Jättenöjd. <laughs> Everybody is in there, like you listen to the album, you can hear it, everyone. Perfectly, and especially Mendes is, is right up there. Which is, you know, I mean, he, he was quite happy to be so much in the forefront of the, the production for once, being a bass player in a, in a metal band or whatever he calls now. Mendes did it. Awesome job. We could use more distortion on that one uh, instead of doing it like a big wall with distorted guitars. Hey, man, this. Bra ljud. Jan har rattat till ett suveränt ljud måste jag ändå säga va? Fantastiskt. Det är skönt att spela. Mm. Blygsande. Äh, sa han. Äh. Var väl inget? <laughs> Hur gick det igår då, Kudde? Fantastiskt bra. Ax gjorde en låt. Och Mendes. Spela in en låt, ja. Kan vi hitta på den också? Här har du kaffe. Torka rent efter det. Ja. Precis som när jag har på toa. Tor toalettsätet är fullt av piss, va? Torka du rent? Ja. Korrekt. Ja. Ja. Kontoret på Atlantis ser ut sådär. Där inne finns en graveringsmaskin. Jag vågar inte gå in. Jag orkar inte gå in. Här är ett litet hängrum kan man väl säga. Ett troll! Ja. Ett troll. Vi har väl varit här en vecka snart imorgon. Vi har varit här en vecka. Alla rum är snart klara och all var snart klart. Så att vi making good fucking progress dude. Här ligger min gamla gitarr. Här, ja, så här ser det ut. Vi kräver blommor då, annars tänker vi inte spela in. Vi ska stå violetta tulpaner, annars 
så ska någon få heads up on a fucking roll. Vi har lättat upp banor eller you're fired. Kolamaskin. Dricker inte sån här skit. Kjell Höglund. Korridor. Stol. Bet you can't play this. Det är otäckt när du filmar det åt dig. Ja, det ska vara otäckt. Här ligger lite gitarrer. Lite pedaler. Det är kulles pedaler. Här står en Fender Strata och en PRS. Det var det nu är för någon en Tremonte kan det kanske. Nej, S. Single cut. Någon SG och en gammal Tele och en gammal Strata till. Det här en Gibson stärkare som vi ska använda som rätt jävligt coolt alltså. Och sen har vi riggen med två stycken Black Stars och en Marshall gammal. Marshall som låter bra också. Här har vi en PRS, vad fan heter den nu då? JA15. Jag har vi spelat mycket på faktiskt. Jättefin gitarr. Här har vi en McCarthy 2, jag tror den heter. En Fender Strata. Här har en samling gitarrer. På PRS som Fender Strata. Här står det flera Fender Strater. Gamla skit, gamla skit. Här har vi en SG, en Stratta till och en Les Paul. Med hål i. Så det var slarvigt, man glömt att sätta dit en mic. It's a bit from day to day, va? But we are, um, we have a tornado phaser and uh, black star distortion box. Why are you speaking English? And we also have the micro amp, amixer. 
It's not connected. But it will be, eventually. It's a classic. Can't live without it, huh? Prova en ny approach, kör de där grejerna. Jag vet, jag skojar det. Ja. <laughs> Nej, det är sånt. Konstnärligt. Please don't touch. Please don't take pictures. Please don't touch. Please don't touch. Please don't touch. Please don't touch. <laughs> Kom där. Trött. Trött. Ledsen. Hej Magnus. Hej hej. Hej Mikael. Fuck off. Vad sa för här Brunda? Ja. Ah. Jag hör någon. Ja. Jag ska se vem det var. Men titta! Mr. Viberg. Mm. Viberg. Han kommer in. Här har vi Jan. Jobbar. Jan lägger en kabel här. Ställt ut ett kylskåp. Fullpackat med bärs. Ett hemlig, hemlig stash. Det här är en så kallad... Vi går in lite närmare så ser ni vad det står det här. Lelle! Nu ska spelas, spelas lite på organet här. Dra sig i organet. Ja, just det! Kapaja. Vad är du för något? Ska vi byta djur? Det är inte som en uh, råda när det är Nej. Lite mer uh, av den gamla skolan kan man säga då. Old school. Då ska det alltså bytas en bandram. Det är bara plugga in via usb -net. Kör du plugg, mycket bättre, mycket snabbare. Är det midisynk på det här? Midisynk, om du med... Vi ska se. Försiktig, försiktig. Inga flåtfläckar på banden nu. Men då tycker jag att du ska göra... Här är ljudet. Det ser ut som en... När man tömmer en... Ljudet. 
en sån här bikupa. happened during the, the, the recording that uh, resulted in Per not being with us anymore. But he plays on the album and he does a really good job. It's a sad thing. He's a great musician and a great friend. It all comes down to people changing and I guess he didn't really want to be there. And I think you have to earn your place in the band if you don't want to be. With Opeth you shouldn't. In fact, you're not allowed to be with Opeth unless you, your heart is, is all there, and that, that wasn't the case for Pat. We wish him all the luck, and we're still good, really good friends with him. And uh, I wish him the best. I have a bunch of favorite songs. I guess I like all of them, otherwise they wouldn't be there on the album. Or, you know, we wouldn't have recorded them if we didn't really like the songs. But my favorites would be uh, Hex Process which is in the middle of the album. I don't really know why, I just like that song. I like the melancholic feel of that song. It also has some type of drive musically that I kind of like, and I like the ending part, it's quite emotional. Um, I also like um, The Devil's Orchard, which is going to be the first single, you know, if you believe in singles. It's a pretty driving song. There's a reason why we put it first on the album. I think that's the song that is more instant. Uh, there's a good chance you're gonna like that song. Uh, my original plan was to have the third song first. I feel the dark. But talking to Stephen Wilson, he said like, yeah, okay, we have the intro song, Heritage, the piano piece. Uh, that's the intro of the album, and then kick in with Devil's Orchard. And I was like, yeah, that's probably a good idea. So I, I did bend over a little bit for, for him. On the first track, which is an instrumental column piece, which is, I would say, quite influenced by John Johansson, was played by Jukke Svalberg. And it was cool that he could play a bit on the album since he's now touring with the band. We've done... Uh, three shows with him so far and uh, we hope that he's going to stay with us uh, we'll see how that unfolds but he's a really really good musician and a good musician and uh, a really nice guy good singer got a good sense sense of rhythm uh, the first time I ever heard him play was when he was in the studio recording the title track the intro of the album which I guess was quite a big thing for him um, he didn't seem that nervous, you know. He just had, he just nailed it pretty much, with the perfect type of emotion that that uh, that we were looking for. Uh, also featuring Mendes on upright bass for the first time. He's been he's been uh, talking about playing upright bass for a long time. So now I had his chance. We borrowed some old bass from a friend of mine. Maybe it was a kind of challenge because I play double bass, standard bass, and I never did it before, so that was pretty cool to have it done. Uh, I also like a song called Nepenthe. Nepenthe, I, to be honest, I don't really know how to pronounce it, but I took it from a record label, <clears throat> the title from a record label called Nepenthe, which I collect. They only put out five albums. I have all of them, of course. Nepenthe, I really like it since First time I heard it. And it's like a type of jazzy sound. There's a, a song that some people probably think it's a joke, which I mean it's it is done a little bit a little bit tongue in cheek and it's a bit gimmicky sounding and everything, but it's pretty far from a joke because it's actually a tribute to Ronnie James T who passed away and who's meant so incredibly much for me throughout the years and uh, I still can't believe he's gone, and I mean, it's kind of feeble the things that you do to kind of pay 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 tribute to someone. But I, I loved him, and we all did, and his music still 
you know, brings shivers down my spine. So this song Slither is made as a tribute to him. Maybe some of you think we should have left it off the album, but I think it's fun, you know, it kind of creates some type of dynamics to the album, you know. Famine is another really cool song, it's very strange and experimental. John G. Sundlin, who played a flute solo over this heavy doom part, which uh, really is far out. Just playing, you know, we recorded him, him walking up to the microphone, which is what you hear in the beginning of the song. He was just kind of tuning up or whatever they do. I don't know how it works, I can't play the, the flute or whatever. Uh, but we recorded him, recorded him walking up to the microphone to record this part, so that's the, the actual start of the, of the song. He has an extreme unique style and <clears throat> I mean the album is called Heritage and kind of links together in a way because he used to record at the Atlantis Studios in the 70s. Percussion he used to play with the Weather Report and <clears throat> even Elvis, I think. Elvis, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Have you played with Elvis? No, you haven't. So um, yeah, he's doing a really cool. I think he brought like dr like dried up goats' feet or something into the studio, like from the Machu Picchu or something. You know, it was ma amazing. You know, he listened to the track once or the part that he's going to play. He listened to it once and then just started doing his thing. He took two takes, nailed it immediately, super pro, and it really sounded evil, some ambient noises he did. I think it was with chains or something. And then he came out into the, the mixing room and we were like, yeah, thank you. And when Alex Acuna came down to the studio, Mendes was uh, fixing, recording this bass part. And the man has been listening to Alex since he was 12 years old. And uh, 
he kind of freaked out. For me it was really special because I've been listening to his work for years. Um, it's Alex Acuna. Uh, it was amazing to, to have him in the same uh, room and watch him play. <laughs> Yeah, I worked for them many years ago. That's right. Yeah. This is the battery, this is the bajo, and this is the one that talks from inside. So the music is this. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, I got it. Spooky, I love it. Vocally, you know, as you notice, there's no screams, and I'm not saying that's the end of my screams, you know. Uh, I still like to do it occasionally, you know, like playing live and stuff like that. And also I recorded for Devon Towns, and was the last type of screaming vocals I did. So I enjoy it, you know, it's just that this time around there was no room for it. You know, the songs came out this way, I didn't want to do some death screams just for the sake of having it in there, because some fans think that's our sound, you know, I mean, it's, it is part of our sound in the past, but, you know, I don't want to linger on the past too much, I, I like to move on, and I'm also really interested in developing that cleaner voice uh, of mine. I enjoy singing, I sing in the shower all the time, stuff like that. The songs on the album are really cool, a bit different from earlier with the stuff, it has, um, less death element uh, parts in it, but um, still you can hear it's Opeth. I know it's gonna cause uh, probably divide people within our fan base or whatever, but I mean, I don't want to stay the same, man. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, you do a thing, you, you come up with a sound and then you kind of, you might stick with that sound for a, for a string of records, for a record, uh, a record or two or something like that and then you, it feels like you saturate things and you, you literally have to move on. I think that was why Heritage sounds the way it did because I, could, I, I personally felt that I couldn't write songs better than in the Watershed style than what's on Watershed. 
the cover of the album I think is really suitable for the music on the album. It, um, I know it was a dream Michael had when he came up with the idea. It caused quite a stir in the, the metal underground or whatever you call it, and uh, which I like. A lot of people thought it was a joke. And I, I agree, it's funny, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at it, I'm kind of laughing and I think it's fun. Uh, but uh, nice, I love it, you know, more colors than we ever had. And it got more of a psychedelic vibe to it. It's maybe a bit shocking if you, if you could compare it to another album covers that Open has. It feels like a kind of the history of the band and the future in some way. The guidelines or whatever I told Travis Smith who who made the cover was that I want to mix between uh, Bruegel's cover, the one like he did one called The Triumph of Death, El Triunfo, La Muerte or something, uh, which is on the cover of the, the Black Sabbath Greatest Hits album, if you've seen that. So I want to cross between that one and Yellow Submarine by The Beatles. I like in a way that it caused such a big reaction. A lot of people hate it, a lot of people love it, uh, and as I said, somebody some think it's a joke. People are writing essays about it, you know, it's crazy. But I like that type of reaction. Rather have a reaction than just a, a, a shrug, so to speak. And the same goes for the music. Every album is different with Opeth. I've been, been in the band now a bit over four years, but as a pre fan to the band as I was before I joined, uh, I think the band has <clears throat> managed to achieve that. And that's how we are. I like that idea of being a bit unpredictable, if you know what I mean. Um, some fans of any bands, they want the same, like they want their favorite albums to be recorded over and over again. Uh, but I mean, I've never been into that. You know, I like change in everything. And um, with the reason why I became a musician was not to, to get, you know, boxed in or to put some boundaries upon myself just because we've done a certain thing in the past, you know, it doesn't mean we have to repeat it over and over again. And some people even think that we have, you know, done the same album over and over again, um, which I don't like hearing, you know, but I, I do believe that we had we have a, a sound or something, you know, and for a couple of records we, we stuck to that sound, like Still Life and Blackwater Park, I see those two as connected. Deliverance is pretty much on its own, Damnation is on its own, Ghost Reveries and Watershed I think are connected, Heritage certainly on its own, um, Orchid and Morning Rise are kind of connected, My Arms, Your Hearse on its own, I think. So I don't think we've, we've, we've repeated ourselves too many times at least, you know. But uh, by doing Heritage, I think we bought ourselves a little bit of a musical future. And I can see that we can... might come up with something interesting for the next record. And I already feel a bit excited about doing another al album, which never happens, to be honest. I always feel like drain after a recording. And I do feel tired and everything like that, but I still feel excited about, about the our musical future. Not saying that, you know, I personally don't want to repeat heritage. I'd like to, to think that I evolve a little bit and do something new for, for the 11th record or whatever, but I think it's a good start for something heritage, right? like a fresh start. The mixing, Stephen Wilson did a great job. I spent the time with him um, doing some, recording some vocals down in his studio and mixing together with him and we also finished up a few like some writing for our own project while I was down there drinking some wine having a good time and then I went down to master the album with Peter Mew at Abbey Road Studios and he's done like he's worked there since 65 and done many of like the, the stuff I collect you know like the progressive psychedelic stuff some of those records I collect he's engineered or produced his first uh, engineering job or producing job was uh, 
S of Sorrow by The Pretty Things, which is an amazing album I've been listening to quite a lot. And I also did Carmen, Fandangos in Space, one of my all-time favorite albums. And uh, Oh My Good Mama by Pink Floyd. Uh, he recorded a band called Forest, which is quite obscure, folk. And Toe Fat, which was the uh, Ken Hensley and Lee Kerslake from Uriah Heep. They had a band called The Gods before and then formed Toe Fat and then Uriah Heep. So he worked with that and I was like, wow, it's, it's, that's pretty cool. But he was so unimpressed with his previous, he's like, don't tell me uh, Oh My God, that's your favorite album. I mean, he was so impressed with everything, unimpressed, unimpressed with, with everything that he'd done. He was sitting there doing his thing. I only spent a few hours there. Well, that, that was pretty cool to be at Abbey Road. I've never been there. So I felt like a kid in a candy store, kind of looking for like footprints that could have belonged to Paul McCartney or something. Or Pink Floyd for that matter. Uh, the future now, when we release the album, we're going to tour as is off as usual. Uh, starting off in America by the time this is released. Then Europe. Japan, Australia, America again, Europe, festivals, etc, etc. Hopefully we get back, uh, get to go back to India again, that was really cool. These songs are like nice to hear on the record and nice to play live. I think it's gonna work really well live. So much live feeling on the record, so it's go gonna be a lot of fun to play them live. Playing live is also always fun, you know, but it, we're going to be away from September till Christmas, pretty much, which is a long time to be away from your family. Um, and friends and whatever, you know, cats, record collection. I mean, we've been around 21 years now, 10, 10 records down the line. I think we feel a bit, we feel fresh, you know, might not, might not look it, but we feel like we still have something to offer to people who are interested in <clears throat> music that I like to think is without boundaries. Uh, still, that's our. That's how we like it. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching this DVD and listening to the album and checking out the pictures, and looking at the sleeve. I hope that you come and see us on tour for this album or for like whenever you choose basically. We're going to be touring quite a lot so I hope to see you out there. Thank you.